Hi everyone, welcome back to VOC's podcast series with Crypto Geek. We have Mr. Neeraj Nagarkati with us again, who is a global crypto tax accountant based in the UK, and he's also an international tax consultant. Uh, in our last episode, Neeraj addressed some of the crucial questions around crypto taxes and laid a ground as to how crypto taxation across the globe works. We have Neeraj back with us again today. Hi, Neeraj. How are you? Hello. Thanks for having me back. <laughs> Thank you for joining us again. And um, the last session was truly insightful. And uh, I hope that today's session will unfold some other uh, mysteries of the world of crypto taxation. Um, I think Surely they will. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So tell me, Neeraj, how, um, how does crypto taxation affect the growth of an economy? Last, I think the last time uh, in the last episode, we addressed what other countries that are uh, crypto tax friendly. And we spoke about UAE and Singapore and El Salvador, which has Bitcoin as their legal tender now. Uh, and um, we also spoke about um, how the global tax regime looks like. But uh, I think how does taxing crypto essentially affect the growth of an economy? Does it even affect the growth of an economy? Does it not? What do you have to say about that? Well, I suppose it, you've got to look at it in terms of uh, various industries and mm. uh, in terms of financial services, for example, in the UK, that makes up quite a lot uh, of the sector. And that is, uh, brings a lot of uh, receipts as well uh, for, the, for the government. Uh, the mm -hmm. crypto industry at the moment is still, you know, fairly um, early mm -hmm. in the stages. However, mm -hmm. what you would notice is that it's fast growing so it's a combination of getting the uh, the tax yeah. regime, um, which is a balance of not having you know too high on the taxes, or even a um, a tax reporting system which is you know uh, spend you know if that businesses mm. spend you know hours. Uh, preparing so that you know they can't focus on their regular activity uh, but um, uh, yeah going back to the question can it affect growth in the, in the economy yeah, mm. I believe the answer is yes absolutely and mm. uh, for example uh, you could have uh, a fairly um, mm. the introduction of the 30 percent in the tax in India that led to mm. a reduction of up to you know 70 percent of uh, trade volumes but mm. uh, once again it's interesting to see how um, how that is because we can only go we've only got one month worth of data and yeah. you know in the, in the long term it could mm. see uh, an increase. Uh, I think beyond actually taxation, um, mm. crypto taxation, it's also crypto regulation. So this is not tax does come under regulation because it's the government that writes the laws and you know accountants who interpret how they how it works in the tax return. Uh, but um, you know whether crypto is accepted as an asset class as well is an um, interesting perspective and if uh, it's you know completely mm. unregulated then you know you can have uh you know the wild west going on and uh whereas if you have too much regulation you might find that a lot of um startup mm -hmm. companies especially move their crypto asset firms overseas and mm -hmm. we're, we're finding that in the uk for example they're moving 
uh, the, the it's, and it's just the blockchain. If it was down to a startup business, they yeah. would actually want 100% to remain in the UK and be uh, regulated, but either due to the stringent regulation or mm. due to um, uh, delays in obtaining the regulation, yeah. then, you know, this is a fast paced uh, sector, isn't it? So they find themselves uh, moving the crypto asset business mm. overseas to a place like the British Virgin Islands or, mm. or Dubai as well. And then um, basing most of the development of the platform here, just keeping that in the UK and it would be marketing mm. uh, and general management as well. But uh, having that, you know, uh, token issuing business yeah. or, you know, the part where you have to uh, or peer to peer lending or uh, setting mm. up as an exchange, these mm. kind of areas, if that is based um, overseas, then naturally uh, you're going to have uh, a reduction in your uh, economic growth due to mm. these areas. And it's, however, uh, there are signs that both, you know, the tax and uh, financial authorities are mm. warming to crypto and they've invited, for example, people from the industry to mm. uh, participate in like a, what do you call it, crypto sprint <laughs> in mm. London and is uh, and our chancellor, the, the finance minister, Rishi Sunak, mm. uh, introduced, they wanted to make, um, you know, a UK, a center of excellence for uh, the yeah. crypto industry mm. and pointed towards say stable coins as, uh, as a crypto that, you know, they can deal with or that they can understand. Yeah. So potentially that could become uh, tax-free in the future. Mm. However, as it's uh, by definition a stable coin, therefore pegged mm. to say the US dollar, uh, then the amount of mm. capital gains on transactions is actually quite minimal. So, but it would be a, a really good step in the right direction. So I believe, you know, uh, mm. uh, regulation, can, you know, it also brings people into the uh, sector and even um, you know, the UAE uh, has brought in a law regulating cryptocurrency uh, yeah. providers and uh, traders. And that has, uh, I believe Kraken was one of the first exchanges to be mm. regulated there. So uh, having a head start on mm -hmm. regulation is also uh, a good thing and okay. a good way forward. Um, so do you think that regulations or a, reg or a strict regulatory framework around crypto taxation affects retail investors or institutional investors more? Because I feel like um, newcomers or investors who, who, have, who do not have a lot of experience of being in this sector where... Um, which is relatively volatile as compared to the traditional market, for them, it would be a little more tricky. However, in terms of taxes or a regulatory framework, whom does that affect more? In retail investors or institutional investors who have a lot of money to put into this market? All right, well, um, it would certainly be more the the retail in the individual investors mm. because a lot of them go in and maybe tax is probably the fourth or the fifth or you know the tenth thing that they would think about i think the first mm. thing they would want to find out is you know what is all the fuss about with crypto why are they, why is it getting so many headlines what gains are there to be made 
in this industry and things like that. So I think these are um, the more uh, questions that uh, arise. And it's not until a lot later that uh, they think about taxes. I believe the um, institutional investors are more geared up because, you know, mm. uh, they're familiar with, you know, non-crypto or similar asset classes such, mm. as, such as shares and they can make analogies and they've got um, resources to bring in tax advisors to also have a, and wealth advisors as well to make more of an informed decision not only just yeah. on uh you know when to uh, anticipate crypto gain but what would be the tax planning behind that as well and you know there's a lot of uh, tax planning that mm. you can use that uh, in fact it's available to everyone both uh, retail individual and you know uh, institutional investors absolutely so uh, I, I believe one of the things that um, individual investors would um, may not be aware of as well is mm. that in some certain countries like uh, either the US or the UK, that uh, transaction such as crypto to crypto trading is actually taxable. So you would think that, uh, oh, it's just exchanging one for another. But in tax land, how that works is that mm -hmm. uh, you're almost selling crypto A, or it's, mm. you're almost selling uh, Bitcoin, you're receiving uh, fiat or cash for that, and mm. then you're paying for another, you know, Ether or another crypto. Mm. And that uh, transaction uh, in it almost wouldn't happen in well, it could happen, but uh, it almost wouldn't happen in as a typical, you know, you, you sell uh, your Google shares in order to buy Apple shares. I think that's the sure. uh, <laughs> transaction, uh, and you don't see the the cash movements, of course, mm. in the process. But uh, that is uh, how you describe a. Uh, you you would have to pay um when say we would have to pay tax on it depends whether you make a gain of course yeah but um in general uh a um you can have there is a tax consequence from uh trip exchanging from one mm -hmm. crypto to another and this is and if they knew about that and it, as well simply because mm -hmm. of the volumes and the number of different cryptocurrencies out there it's yeah. quite easy to uh, convert from one to the other and mm -hmm. and some cryptos may even require you to go from fiat to ethereum to their own crypto their own native crypto for example mm -hmm. before you um before they can uh trade in that so it's uh it's an interesting one, and yeah. I think I believe that you know more crypto tax education, mm. as uh, we mentioned in a previous episode, mm. that um, you know more crypto tax education from the tax authorities in mm. a you know even if it's a, a webinar format uh, right, right. would be very beneficial. I think the U.S. government has been actively doing that. Uh, the U.K. government has been uh, having, uh, like you mentioned in the last episode, they held an, a webinar around cryptocurrencies and taxation. Um, what are some of the other countries that are actively trying to educate their citizens in terms of cryptocurrencies? For I, I mean, I do know that a lot of countries try to educate their citizens around um, scams and and or Ponzi schemes in uh, pertaining to or related to cryptocurrencies hmm. but um, education around crypto tax is still is still scanty I feel yes and 
it's more from the um, the tax professionals mm. and uh, maybe the crypto tax software providers that we're seeing a lot of the education on on this and they provide some really handy guides as yeah. well uh, and oh, you'll see a lot of blogs as well uh, mm. relating to crypto tax education I haven't seen or what when I looked at this question for a lot of countries uh, especially the major industrializations, mm. they didn't have much in terms of, you know, webinar. Uh, and I, yeah. some had like a question and answer service, like in forums, but that was more, um, you know, you can ask us this question and we'll mm. see if we can answer it. Uh, on the other side, of course, is that uh, where a, uh, they might, they would uh, point towards their guidance as their source of education, which is, mm. which is good as well. And on the last bit hmm. is that if you've got a country which is mainly, you know, tax free, then you wouldn't expect the government to uh, have <laughs> crypto right. tax education when they don't tax the tax crypto in the first place. Yes, agreed. Um, since we are about to come to the end of our this episode, I have one last question from you. Uh, what are some of the biggest unanswered questions when it comes to crypto taxation? And also, if you could suggest our viewers some um, uh, some sources which they can refer to uh, while looking at crypto taxation or crypto education in general. Oh, right, sure. So some of the biggest unanswered questions is probably this one <laughs> <laughs> right but uh, yeah in all seriousness uh, i think it's almost how the unanswered questions are how you get into how so someone gets into crypto so hmm. for example they start off learning about Bitcoin yeah. and then, you know, they learn about other uh, types that there are maybe dozens of other types of crypto and mm. they believe, okay, we've, we figured that out. Then beyond that, you suddenly find, oh, oh, this is nice. You know, we've got uh, something called NFTs, non-fungible mm. non tokens. And, uh, you know, that is its <laughs> it's its own uh, huge asset class and so many uses and yeah uh, and then you've got uh, you know the metaverse mm. uh, web three um, decentralized autonomous uh, organizations as well. Mm. And you find that there's a lot more that meets the eye when yeah. it comes to uh, crypto. So I think from the tax perspective, it's a similar thing where, and even maybe governments with their tax rules as well, where sure. they think, okay, we've got, we've written all the rules for tax um, or interpreted them at least for, you know, crypto investing and then you know last year was arguably the year of the nfts and from that come a lot of unanswered questions mm. you know essentially how do you tax nfts and uh, also uh, emerged you know uh, metaverse businesses and how do you tax virtual land <laughs> that kind mm. of thing and yeah uh our uh, NFT exchanges are they providing an electronic service? Yeah. So, uh, what you might have is uh, if you are providing electronic services into a country, mm. uh, then they might want if to their users and their users are ba consumers are based in that country, then mm. uh, a country like might 
want to say, hey, we, we want a piece of the action as well and, you know, apply the equivalent of a VAT or a GST as well for this kind of transaction. So that's uh, an area. And, mm. and going back as well, I think, yeah, the biggest unanswered question is where, where do you locate crypto? As in, where is it based? <laughs> <laughs> I think that and is the thing I about think, crypto. It's not based anywhere, right? I know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, a rabbit hole question, hmm. uh, which I try to, well, actually, you know, if, if it's on uh, an offline wallet, I suppose hmm. technically you, you can locate it. It's, uh, it's within that. But uh, a question which... Uh, came up recently was mm. how do you invoice a decentralized autonomous organization as in mm. which uh, <laughs> which country is it based in and I believe the answer was not in any one particular country and <laughs> you often have uh, consultants the invoices will be addressed to you know an email address mm. and I think that's uh, you know the best way you can do it, and you can argue that you know uh, the co the community within a, a DAO is not based in your country. Yeah, uh, it's quite easy to argue that. But if you know, you know if the ma vast majority of them are based in the UK, say for example, it's hmm. a, you know a football team, then th that the answer is probably more clear. But if it's more of a you know, a worldwide project, then mm. it it is possible to argue, especially if you're in a smaller country, that most, if not all, of the, the benefit of the service is overseas, and therefore it shouldn't be subject to tax. And that's that could be a, a valid argument there. And I also um, you also picked up on you know what are some resources that people can go to. Mm. And uh, you have some really great guides from, uh, I think, Coinly X guide is really um, a nice, straightforward, um, well-written tax guides. And they would have one for most countries. Well, let's see if they've got one for Coinly India tax. And mm. I believe they do. They call them the ultimate guides. So that is uh, uh, a nice um, point to go to. And most of the, as I said, most of the crypto tax software mm. providers will have their own kind of tax guide as well. And yeah. but with the caveat that you hear either um, is that you know tax is usually a, to your own circumstances and you know this is our that th there aren't any specific crypto tax laws and this is just mm. our best interpretation most likely scenario of how we see it and we've got input from mm. crypto tax accountants from all over the world uh, whilst these guides are um they're fantastic there might be a really really specific um situation in in your instance and yeah that would be where yeah uh, the best place to go so i suppose for an individual investor hmm. uh, it's worth you know making a few trades and tracking from the very start is an absolute um golden piece of advice uh, hmm. i think in the industry and the you've come across it you know do your own research which mm -hmm. is or to make yourself more in the community, mm -hmm. be your or D Y O R that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> make you sound a bit more in mm. with the in crowd. Uh, but yeah, definitely, there's and actually uh, webinars on Eventbrite. Mm. I, I found that these were hugely beneficial, and you'll find people. There are probably about you know two or three webinars a day that you can go to oh. learning about that, and 
at like also if you're talking about cryptocurrency education in more mm. widely the blockchain council have a number of courses yeah. that literally just came to mind on uh how the underlying technology works and then i think you might have one for decentralized finance mm. another one for um uh, do they have one for taxation i don't think yet, but more for financial um specialists as well and also on the legal side Hmm. Uh, of the taxation so the blockchain council is also a good resource for that kind of thing right and any of the major publications as well uh, voice of crypto i also recommend as well <laughs> yes <laughs> we do have a crypto encyclopedia of sorts where we're trying to uh, educate people about the basics of cryptocurrency and we think that educating people about cryptocurrencies will bring in a lot of lot more people into the decentralized finance world so <clears throat> that for sure is one motive behind it however like you said uh, the golden the golden rule is still do your own research and uh, while while there can be a lot of information and education available around it um, the key to being safe in this space and secure in this space is still uh, in researching on your own and assessing projects based on uh, based on the community the design the the kind of trust that they've built not just on social media but on um, but on a more uh, on a more I think personal level with people and in terms of reviews and so on and so forth so yeah, I think that you you really did sum it up pretty well, Neeraj. Um, oh, thank you, cheers. Unfortunately, we have come to the end of this session too. Yeah. It was really good to have you again with us here today. And hopefully in the next session, we'll answer some more questions around crypto taxation and we'll have a fun conversation where, which will, be insightful for our listeners. Thank you again, Neeraj. Do you have any closing comments? Yeah, it is um, mainly that, uh, yeah, it's a uh, crypto taxation is definitely something to consider hmm. um, when you're um, making a financial decision. And I think more bro broadly, taxation in general, as part of any investment to uh, consider not just crypto, but could be stocks or shares. And uh, there are some uh, natural savings to be made already yeah. in the tax system by just knowing about uh, the taxation uh, consequences. And also, lastly, thank you so much for having me on. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for joining us for the podcast series. All right, guys, see you in our next episode with crypto geek that this was all for today we'll see you next time bye bye